Hey guys, Miss Sarah here. Welcome to Kids Kingdom Sunday School. I'm so glad you're here this week. I've been thinking about what it might be like to be stuck on a deserted island. I sometimes think it would be kind of cool. There'd be fun new things to see. There'd be maybe new animals that I don't see normally around my house. All I have here is a goldfish, two dogs, and a guinea pig. So I think I might see new kinds of animals on a deserted island. Sometimes we ask our family around the dinner table dinner time questions. One of the fam family questions that comes up is, what three things would you take with you if you were stuck on a deserted island? That's a question that you guys might want to ask your families at home this week. Maybe you've read a story like Swiss Family Robinson and where they're your, they get stranded on a deserted island or stuck on an island. Maybe you've watched the movie. I've never read the book, but I did recently watch the movie Swiss Family Robinson, which is kind of a kind of an interesting movie because all kinds of things are on that island that shouldn't be on that island. So if you haven't watched that movie and you do watch that movie, maybe you'll find yourself wondering some of the same things. My family wondered, like, why is there an ostrich and a zebra on this deserted island? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But anyway, we're going to read a story about how Paul gets shipwrecked. And spoiler alert, it's not as fun as some of the things that happened in Swiss Family Robinson or some of the things that me and my family talk about might happen if we ever got stuck on a deserted island. But before we get to that, let's go over our memory verse for May one last time because it is the last week of May. So our memory verse from May, if you guys have been here this whole month, you know it's Acts 16 verse 17b. If you're new to Kids Kingdom Sunday School, welcome. Our memory verse for May is Acts 16 verse 17b. The B means that it's the second part of that verse. So it says this, these people are servants of the Most High God. They are proclaiming a way of salvation to you. So if you have it memorized, great. If you're still working on memorizing it, one of the things I like to do is write it down on a little note card and put it somewhere where I'll see it so I can get it in my head and have it memorized by the end of May. So good luck, guys. If you have it memorized, send me a video of you saying our memory verse. You can send it to christianed at pfumc.org, and I would love to see you saying our memory verse. And who knows, maybe I'll send you a prize for memorizing our Bible verse for May. So we know if you've been with us, and if you haven't been with us, we've been talking about Paul all month. And one of the things that Paul has been up to is he's been traveling around telling people about God's love. Another word for telling people is proclaiming. He actually got in a lot of trouble for proclaiming God's love to people, and he ended up getting arrested. You know if you've been with us, that, did, that that didn't stop Paul from proclaiming his faith. And you also know if you've been with us that proclaim is our faith word. If you haven't been with us, we have a faith word every month. And this month's faith word is proclaim. And proclaim actually means to share out loud what you believe about your faith. So Paul is going around and he's telling people what he believes about his faith. And what he believes is that Jesus is God's son and he was sent to tell everyone that God loves them. And so Paul is carrying on that work, telling people that God loves them, and he wants everyone to know that. But a lot of people didn't like that. So Paul ends up getting in some trouble. He gets arrested. So Paul's a prisoner, and he's being transported from where he was to Rome. But Rome was kind of far away, so he had to go on a ship. And he finds himself dealing with a very unexpected problem, which you guys already know it's going to happen because I told you a shipwreck is going to happen. So our story is found in Acts 27 verses 1 through 44. And 1 through 44, that's a lot of Bible verses. So when we have a story that's long, I like to read it to you guys from a kid's Bible sometimes. I couldn't find it from kid's Bible. So I'm going to read from our curriculum our curriculum does a really good job of taking the story when it's long and breaking it down into a smaller story so you guys don't get bored listening to me read you 44 verses. So it shortens it and makes it more manageable for you guys to listen to because 44 verses is a lot of verses and you guys sometimes 
have a hard time listening to 44 verses. But in your Bibles at home, if you want to read the whole story, it's Acts 27 verses 1 through 44. And I really encourage you guys to check it out because when we shorten the story, sometimes there's pieces that we don't tell the, the whole part of. So you guys should check the story out with your moms and dads or grandmas and grandpas or aunts and uncles or whoever you're hanging out with, grown-ups, older brothers, sisters, whoever you want to check the story out with. So Paul is in prison he's in prison but he's getting taken to rome so we're going to pick up the story from the curriculum version which is a condensed version of the story from the bible so let's check it out it says this paul was in prison because of the jewish leaders that were not happy with his missionary work paul was being sent to rome so the emperor of the roman empire could hear the case against him however the journey to rome didn't go as planned after the ship sailed, they encountered delays and weren't able to travel as quickly they, as they had hoped. The weather was getting bad. Paul was an experienced sailor. He warned the ship's captain and crew that if they continued to travel, there would be damage to the ship and some people might lose their lives. The captain decided to sail on anyway. Pretty soon they encountered a fierce storm with really strong winds. After several days, the ship had been battered so badly by the storm that the crew began to throw the cargo overboard. They were trying to lighten the load so the ship wouldn't fall apart. After more days, when the storm was going strong still, the crew gave up hope that they would live through the storm. Paul told the crew and other passengers that an angel from God had visited him and told him that he would make it to Rome because God had work for him to do there. Paul encouraged the crew and the passengers and told them to have courage and not give up. Paul said they would all be saved, but they needed to park the ship on an island or the ship was not going to make it. The ship fell apart, but Paul and the entire crew and all the passengers were able to swim to the island and be saved. Paul was not, Paul not only had courage himself, but he was able to help the rest of the people have courage too. And that's our story. It was quite an ordeal for Paul and the prisoners and the rest of the crew. The Bible, the account in the Bible, certainly doesn't sound as fun as imagining what we might take if we were stranded on a deserted island. The Bible says that Paul and his fellow prisoners ended up shipwrecked after they had been in a ship in a storm at sea for 14 days and nights. And it wasn't just a regular storm or kind of a scary storm. It was a hurricane force storm. The Bible says they couldn't see the sun or the moon. So they were in complete darkness. And on the 15th day, the ship finally ran aground. There were 276 passengers, prisoners on the ship as well as the crew of centurions, the Roman soldiers who were with them, taking them to Rome. They all reached the land safely. This didn't surprise Paul though, because Paul knew that God intended for him to reach Rome to help spread the good news there. God sent an angel who visited Paul and said, you're gonna make it, we're all gonna make it, you're all gonna be safe. So Paul not only had courage, but he encouraged those around him. So what can we learn from this, guys? First, we know that God had a plan for Paul's life, and nothing was going to stop Paul from doing God's work and proclaiming God's love for people. Believers, that's you and me, people who believe in Jesus, can find comfort in knowing that God has a plan for them, too. We have to follow him and trust him and count on him to fulfill his purpose for our lives. We can trust that God is in control, just like Paul trusted that God was in control. Next, we have to believe that in the middle of this hurricane type storm, that it was difficult for Paul to trust that, that everything was gonna be okay. But God gives Paul a helper, gives Paul the Holy Spirit when 
he was having a hard time. God told Paul that they were all going to be safe. He told Paul that he would make it to Rome to share his love with the people there. So in the midst of the storm, it would have only been natural for Paul to doubt that. But the Holy Spirit enabled Paul to believe what God had promised him. His faith in God enabled him to encourage the other people on the ship in a very difficult time. And because of God's promise and because the Holy Spirit was there helping Paul, Paul was able to help and encourage everyone else in that boat. The Holy Spirit gave Paul the ability to have courage and trust God in a very frightening situation. I've, I've never been in a hurricane. I hope I'm never in a hurricane, but I've been in some pretty scary storms and I can't imagine being on a boat in the middle of one of them. So Paul, through the help of the Holy Spirit, was able to trust God in the midst of it and to encourage the people around him to trust God in the midst of it. Paul chose to encourage his traveling companions in this dangerous situation. Actually, as I was talking about this, I remember one summer when I was working at summer camp and a tornado was in the area and we were all on staff and we had to keep everyone else calm. It was our job to to help the campers stay calm even though we were kind of scared and I was really scared but the Holy Spirit helped all of us to stay calm to help keep the kids calm because it was scary but we had to be brave for the kids and I, I only know that that was happening because God was there with us just like God was with Paul in this situation on the boat we have the Holy Spirit helping us in situations in our life when they're scary. He helps us in our own storms in our lives. We might not have storms like this hurricane on this ship, but we have storms that we go through, guys, and we can trust God is there in the midst of them with us. Third, Paul chose to be obedient to God, and we can learn from his example. Sometimes, guys, we complicate God a lot we think that God's all about these rules and having all these rules that we have to follow and it's so hard and we can never do it. But God really asks us to do two things. He asks us to love him with everything that we have, our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And he asks us to love people like we love ourselves. Paul showed his love for God and his love for others by proclaiming his faith to them. He believed with all his heart that Jesus was the Son of God, the Savior of the world, and he was the only way to reconcile people with God. And he believed that people needed to hear this message. And the only way that he could show his love for God and his love for other people was to share this news with them. God, there, God was with Paul as he did this. And guys, there's a lot of ways that we can show our love for God and our love for other people. It's up, for us, it's up to us to find ways to do that, but that's really what God wants us to do. He wants us to love him and to love other people. He doesn't want us to, to worry about being perfect. He doesn't want us to worry about, oh, what if we mess up? He just wants us to worry about loving him and loving people. And when we do mess up, he gives us a lot of chances to try again, guys. And that's the really cool thing about God is that he forgives us and he gives us grace to do it again and again and again. And so I think, guys, that we have a challenge for this week. We get to go out in the world and we get to love God and love people. And I would love to hear how you guys are doing that. So again, let me know. Email me at christianed at pfumc.org and let me know how you're doing that. And right now we're going to pray that God will help us as we go out and proclaim his love by loving others. So let's say a prayer. Dear God, I thank you so much for Paul, for his example, for his life, for the legacy he left us. God, he loved you so much and he was zealous about sharing your love with people. God, he loved you. He loved others. We want to be people who do the same thing. So help us this week to be mindful of how we love you and how we love others. Help us to go into this world and do that. And Lord, um, help us to remember that if we need help, we have the Holy Spirit and help us to listen 
for the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit guides us as we do that, God. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it for this week, guys. I am so grateful that you've been here with me this month as we talked about Paul. I can't wait to see what we have next month. I will see you next time. Bye.